without condition. It says, healing them in the world. Well, we know this as grown-ups. This Jesus is the reason for this season, especially. The Jesus story is pretty simple. We killed him. God raised him. That's why we celebrate. His followers, it says, saw Jesus, ate and drank with him before he died and after he died. After he died. So this morning we're talking about resurrection, not resuscitation and not reincarnation. Resurrection, right? And that makes this gift of resurrection, makes this Sunday, every Sunday, in Easter morning, right? Resurrection makes every day, any day, we believe, a day of hope and faith and trust in a God who makes promises and a God who keeps promises. Promises for both the living and the dead, right? If you need this message in a nutshell, well, in an eggshell, <laughs> Jesus lives. Jesus lives. In him, even this crucified murder is forgiven, wiped away in the steadfast love and mercy and grace of God. Right? So in the Bible, from the very beginning, those stories say that when it comes to brokenness, our brokenness, when it comes to sin, we're all guilty. And in Jesus, we are all forgiven and welcomed home into the arms of God. I don't know about you, but do you need a better excuse than that to have a party? Now I know, I know back then it was and still is quite the shock. Resurrection from death to life is not what anyone expected. His followers expected a wake, a funeral, a blackened day of sadness and sorrow. But the stories, the stories say that these three women and why is it always women who show courage? Women who show up in matters of faith? Well, it's another sermon. <laughs> these women, these women expect nothing but loss and a boulder too big to roll away. They expect the death of all their hopes and dreams in Christ. And still they go to the tomb to prepare the body to honor the man they loved, right? Imagine their surprise. Well, you really can't, right? You can't imagine their surprise. It's simply too amazing, too out of the ordinary. The dead stay put. The dead don't rise up. But Jesus does. And it shatters every expectation. They see the empty space. They, they hear the good news, the good news gospel word. He's not here. He is risen. And then, these first evangelists, first preachers of the word, go and tell, are told to go and tell. Go and tell. Hurry. Go and tell. And then it says, and so they, well, Mark's gospel says, it seems they went and didn't tell. They run in fear. They run in amazement. They run in terror over what this means if this is really true. What does it mean for the world? So for a time, for a time there is no party, only panic. There's no festivities, only fear. There's no speech, just silence. But then, I had an author friend who said, the but then in the stories is always the important turn. But then the world turns right side up and Jesus shows up again and again and anew and in the flesh, sort of. It's the same Jesus, but a little different, right? And then the message gets out. They all go about preaching the peace of Jesus Christ. They preach Jesus as Lord, not just of them, but Lord of all, right? Their silence gives way to broadcast, person to person, community to community, heart to heart, lips to ear, right? 
starting from right there in Galilee, and then Judea, and then Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth, and who knows, perhaps to the end of the cosmos. What more good news do you need to throw a party? Well, okay, imagine this. No better, believe this, trust this. Your sins, which may be many and colorful and hurtful and challenging, are forgiven. Not can be, not might be, not will be. In Christ, they are forgiven. They've been judged in Jesus Christ. Now remember, you've all, me too, have been found guilty and forgiven. Our brokenness has been washed away. As far as the east is from the west, or if you're a Star Trek fan, into infinity and beyond, right? Far away. You know the name of the one responsible for this party, Jesus Christ. And the good news is, Jesus Christ knows your name as well. Today, every day, any day becomes the time to come home. Time for that fatted calf, that party robe, the gold ring, the neighbors, all invited to gather from all around. And when you come to this party, here's what you get. You, healed. Jesus always. The party favor you get is peace. Peace with God. Peace with one another. Peace now and forever. You see, Easter is a party like no other party ever. And you should remember, it's not just for kids this day. It's for you too. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. What more? Hallelujah. What more do you need, right? Well, okay. You can throw in a batch of bunnies and baskets and beans and bonnets if that makes you happier, right? But honestly, honestly, what more in the world could you ask for than to have a Savior, Jesus Christ, who's come to party with you every day with healing in his wings and in his heart for you <laughs> forever, right? This is how God does Easter. From that Bible lesson, it will be said on this day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. Let us be glad and rejoice in his loving, saving grace. Why? Because this is how God does every Easter. Christ is risen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.